the rippling swirl with which St. Anne's headdress curls about her brows, the slight enigmatic smile which curves her cheek, the eyelids droop. These are forms shaped by movement, as water is shaped by weight and motion. And in most violent contrast to this elusive movement, a frowning, fiery image with mouth contracted in the ultimate rejection of a smile. And a stony profile, austerely etched with grim ambition. Even the Grecian profile of an idealized youth obeys. Even the most savage grotesque. Lodovico Sforza, Duke of Milan. Most illustrious Lord, having now considered the specimens of all who proclaim themselves skilled contrivers in the arts of war, I shall endeavor, without prejudice to anyone else, to explain myself to your excellency, to acquaint your lordship with my secrets, offering myself at your pleasure effectually to demonstrate all those matters here briefly recorded. Item, I have kinds of mortars most convenient to carry, and with these I can fling small stones almost resembling a storm, and the smoke of these causes great terror to the enemy, to his great detriment and confusion. Item, I will make armored cars, safe and unassailable, which entering among the enemy with their artillery there is no body of men so great that would break them. Item, in case of need, I will make big guns, mortars, and light ordnance of fine and useful forms out of the common type. Where it is not possible to employ cannon, I can supply catapults, mangonels, trebuchets, and other engines of wonderful efficacy not in general use. In short, as the variety of circumstances shall necessitate, I can supply an infinite number of different engines of attack and defense. I believe I can give perfect satisfaction and the equal of any other in architecture and the composition of buildings public and private. And I can carry out in sculpture and also I can do in painting whatever may be done as well as any other, be he who he may. In painting, he did whatever might be done. From such tiny sketches as this, he evolved upon the wall of the refectory of Santa Maria della Grazia, the most famous Last Supper in all painting. Noting the elements of the great composition in haste and carelessly among notes on architecture, and above a careful theorem concerned with the division of a circle. For thus he worked from sunrise until darkness. On these his drawings, some casual, 
but other carried to a high perfection. Sometimes, suddenly, he would throw down his brush and leave painting. Sometimes, abruptly, he would leave and go to the Corte de Vecchia across the city, where stood unfinished the great model of a horse in clay, and upon this he would work, a monument to the glory of the Sforza. Did he, on those restless days, as he walked in the hot sun, did he pause to make such rapid notes as these in his sketchbook? Refining the pose or strengthening the form of that great stallion, destined never to be cast in bronze? Or was his mind already elsewhere, considering other gigantic horses? The Trivulzio monument never even begun. Or the great fresco, the equestrian battle of Anghiari, which flicked from the wall within a century. Of all this great concourse, only the drawings remain. Only on paper do these mighty creatures prance in their imaginary school of war. Images, some no bigger than a sugar lump, none larger than an apple. <laughs> Of all his great projects, we possess only sketches and shadows. But the Leonardo whom we possess is the man who sought in the natural world the ideal of grace set in the truths of science. The man who compared all things in search of one. He would compare the bones of a horse with those of a man seeking in that comparison a truth, a unity. And from these bones and muscles minutely examined, he would raise in grace the ideal body of a man. to the source, the complex geography of the body. Out of the womb, the curled embryo, soft as a flower, evolves the taut construction of maturity. This map of sinews interleaved is but an island and an ocean. And those that follow are the charts of an explorer who, in search of truth, mapped for the first time the rivers, the seas, and the mountains of the world that is man. The skull, the seat of the mind. Traditionally, the seat of the soul. Leonardo hazards the soul's position and charts it at the intersection of three converging lines. 